Okay. NCR has had a front seat as we've changed. One of the oldest tech companies in the world, around about 136 years older, and to stay around for that length of time, we've had to evolve. So we've evolved constantly, we change constantly. Every day, we look inward, we look outward, we see how do we change things, how do we improve, how do we better serve you guys, how do we help you guys better serve your customers, and what do we do to make sure that NCR remains relevant. Now, where we can add massive value is the fact that we sit across the various industry. We don't just provide services to you guys, the financial services, and for your customers and for our partners. We actually also provide services for other industries. So you can see up here, for example, whether it's self-check-in, going and using the kiosks. Uh, we have them in Australia, but other parts of the world, you'll see them come around. Um, you can actually go and use NCR for that. Some of you guys shopped in Coles and Woolies. Anyone seen the NCR branding on the machines? So again, we have a massive market share there. In Australia, we've got 90% market share of that particular area of retail. Okay? Not again in Australia, and really this region, but video tellers in other places like the US are huge. People love them. In Australia, they haven't taken off, but in other places they have. And so people are using that to interact more and to actually interact around the clock. You're not just literally now on where the bank is open, nine to five, if you're lucky, and some days will have bank holidays. Now, people expect to interact with their bank 24 seven, on demand. In the US, video tellers taken off. Here, there'll be other video solutions that come through. And my hunch says it'll be more mobile based. And then even if you go wider than that, NCR's getting involved in how do we do more around self-service? How do we not just self-service the ATMs and move away from tellers and other bits and pieces, but how do we actually bring everything together as a connected economy, a connected world, to give you better solutions for your customers, to change their experiences. So, where are your customers today? I'm sure you guys spend a lot of time reading research, I know some of you attend round tables to share information. You get reports, you get white papers, we produce white papers, there's information everywhere to read. But how much do you really know about your customers? How much do you know based on global trends? Some people tour the world, they go and see best of breed solutions, it's a great way of getting out there and doing it. Other people don't. But how much do you know? You know, traditionally people went into the banks and they did their business there. Is that still the case? Okay. We saw quite a big show of hands for iPhones in the room. Okay? If I was asked again a similar question, hands up if you've got a smartphone. So in Australia, roughly 99% plus of people have a smartphone. Australia is an early adopter in terms of technology. This is a good thing because we're at the forefront of change. However, you guys and us, all of us together, need to make sure we're at the forefront of change, driving that change for our customers. Because if we don't, the customers are not going to use us anymore because there's new things coming through. We've got challenger banks, we've got neo banks, we've got all sorts of fintechs coming through. And unless we evolve, we generally die. So we need to change the way we interact, change the way we service our customer base. And we need to think about how we're actually going to do that through the traditional channels we've had of the branch and how we actually change that to be more of a digital enabled channel. In China, you can actually see they've taken this one step further. Cash <coughs> has kind of died off pretty much completely. And they've even got these lanes now for walking down using your smartphone. <laughs> so you'll actually see if you go there, the lane which is for people with non-smartphone usage is clear pretty much the whole time. Everybody's down just doing this. The world is changing. I'm not saying we're going to follow China here in Australia. I still think there's a, a good tail left on cash and other ways of paying for things. But it certainly just shows the extremes that are changing out there in the world. Again, another shot for you from China. Even beggars on the street have WeChat, Alipay, and other bits and pieces. So all of them are little QR codes. Because they know if they don't, they don't get money. You know, if you went into Australia and you were, you know, you see the beggars here, it's a different story, right? It's a hat, it's a different way of collecting. And that's just a very basic thing to watch. But the world is shifting across all ages, all demographics. 
So, we live in an application-based economy, absolutely. I'm sure all of us have used an app today, one way, shape, or form. You've probably used one the last half an hour. Whether it was to check your email, whether it was to see what the weather was doing today. Apparently it's going to be a lovely day in Sydney. It's always nice to Melbourne, though, as you guys probably know. And, jokes aside, there'll be apps for banking. And you guys will already have them. I've already got them. Um, there's different functionality that's offered on them. There's now new ones coming with fintechs all the time. You know, doing different things. You've got new um, startups coming in the space. People like Beam, where they're sending cash back and forth. This is constantly changing. Apps are driving this change. So, you know, if you think about the time it took ATMs to get out there to service 50 million people, it took 14 years. Okay? That same 50 million people using apps took less than a year. Okay, so the way you reach your customers has changed. The speed at which you can interact with your customers has changed. And equally, if you're not good, the speed at which they can tell the world about that experience has also changed. So even if you've just got a very small portion of unhappy, uncontented users, their ability to take to social media and tell the world about it is massive. And so the way you interact, the way the channels interact, are very, very important now. And to make sure you have that truly connected experience so that the way you view a balance on your phone and the way you view a balance on the ATM remain the same are also very important. Because what we're seeing with this shift in millennials, and it goes back to a question Andy asked a moment ago about as people are starting to pay with their phones, for example, more and more using apps, and not using cash, has debt increased? Well, the answer to that is yes, debt has increased. And the banks and others are having to take more responsibility now around education. This is an education issue. So the millennials are happy to get their phones out, but they don't understand when they keep beeping it and it doesn't work anymore, it means they're out of cash. So, you know, phone mum and dad, what's going on? This is very strange. But the world has changed. And what's happened is they've adopted technology very, very quickly. But there hasn't been the education that's gone with it. So it hasn't had the responsibility and it hasn't had really any of the restrictions that need to be there, the governance that needs to be there to ensure responsible use of that new technology. And so NCR is helping you guys do that through multiple channels and making sure that what we do not only replicates you know, the experience across various connected experiences, but it gives you that ability to educate your users. So a few little stats for you guys. You can all read, I'm assuming you can. Uh, up on the screen, you can see how we are with adoption. A few things to point out. Firstly, the adoption of Apple Pay, Google Pay, and all the others. Whilst it sounds pretty fast, that's a hell of a lot slower than all the analysts predicted. So when Gartner and the others looked at this, and they went, wow, yeah, this is going to take off and be the next big thing. Yeah, it's taken off, sure, but not as quickly. And so this also tells us that cash is going to be around a lot longer than we think. Okay? And there's a lot more stats around that too. And I'll get through some of those a little bit later in the presentation. But essentially, 42% of users that have actually used mobile phones for a payment or transaction, 42% have said they wouldn't do it again. So again, user experience is still not good. And obviously, you know, after this, I'd be happy to share information with you guys and have a chat about you know, the sources and where we got this from. A lot of this information has been used by actually sitting down with 100 leaders of financial services organizations all over the world and actually asking them what the most important topics are what trends they're seeing, and so on. So, a little question to see who gets this one right. So, who is more likely to call his bank contact centre? Go on, raise your hands if you think it's A, a plugged in millennial in Sydney. Not many, okay. So, who thinks it's the retiree? Show your hands, come on, interaction, you're awake. Okay. You'd be interested to know it's actually A. And this comes back to education. Millennials, they love technology, absolutely. They can show you apps all day long. Don't know how to do anything with paying bills, no clue. So they go to the branch 88% more than any other demographic. Bizarre, eh? You're thinking branches, they're pulling out of towns, how do we do things? Millennials need you, they need your branches. 
but they want to be at a pre-stage. They want to be able to do stuff on their apps and go in and have that follow through. They don't want to go into the branch and have 100 questions and passwords and new things. They want to follow through with that journey and that experience. And that's the challenge you guys have to is how do we do that? MCR can help you with that. How do we actually follow that through? So it's a big rate, and equally, they're 1.7 times more likely to actually call a contact centre. And you find that it's millennials calling contact centres more than any other age group because they need help. They don't know when a bill comes through, what they're meant to do. And when they run out of money on their app, they don't really know what it means, so they need a bit of help with that too. This is a massive opportunity if you get the education and user experience right to capitalise on cost savings, efficiency gains, and so on. Okay, building on the research that we had, you can basically see also a massive shift in terms of what the ATMs are doing. So before, it was all about cash out. Quite happy, does it give me cash? Yes, perfect, thank you very much. If you think about this year, 2018, and where we're going to be in two years' time, it's a big shift. 6% shift from cash only to multifunction. Because <coughs> the banks, you guys, independents, are buying new technology. They want to be able to interact across multiple devices with multiple devices. So they want to be able to use their mobile to pre-stage. They want to be able to get to an ATM and get cash out. The banks, however, also want to reduce their cash and transit costs, so they want to have a look at recycling and other clever technologies. They want to look at how you improve security. They want to understand in Australia, how, what's your leave-behind strategy? What does that mean? So they start to look at how do we move away from tellers? How do we take the headcount, the fixed cost of having someone there, out and replace it with a smart device that can do the same? But how do you ensure that that has a high availability and it's serviced in the right way and it stands up in the right way? And so the people are moving more and more to new technology. So this relates back to those hundred leaders of financial services organisations that were actually interviewed to get this data. And some interesting statistics in here. So you can see straight away, um, again, branches are very, very important. 88% is a high number. 88% of people believe the branch is still absolutely, fundamentally key. So how do you change it? How do you become digital? How do you actually change the branch? Because if you stay as you are today, and some of you I'm sure will be ahead of this, others will be behind, it's just we're all in different parts of our planning, you won't survive. The neo banks will come in, the challenger banks will come in, they have a different cost base, they have a different model, you won't be there, it's not going to be a case of, oh, it's okay, we'll just stay as we are, we'll see how we go. You won't be able to move fast enough because the rate of change is just accelerating hugely. And you're either part of it or you're left behind. So, bringing it back together, the connected experience. These are essentially the main channels you want to be considering when you're doing it. So, how do we link them together? How do we make sure it's seamless? And how do we make sure that you're putting the customer first. Because if you don't put the customer first, the whole thing breaks down, it doesn't work. The customer needs to be able to interact with any of these channels, whether it's digital, on the mobile, call center, the branch, your ATM. And it needs to be seamless. They need to be able to start a transaction or an interaction at any of these devices and follow it through. None of them want to go to the next device or into a branch and start the security process again. None of them want to start filling an application form again. And none of them expect when they want to take out a mortgage to wait eight to 12 weeks before anything happens. People demand things now, millennials especially. Millennials are a I want it now culture. Hence, again, you know, they have a problem with debt. Very happy to use their apps, borrow some more money, top it up, and buy the next thing. And they're very much wired that way. They expect it quickly, they expect it efficiently. If you don't get it, they go on social media and they tell the world about it has to be seamless through every single part of your business. So, the connected experience is highly important. If you're not already talking to us or others about it, I suggest you do and you consider it. And I'd be very happy with the team to take you through the options that are available and also introduce you to people that have done it and done it well. Because you learn more from speaking to other people that have succeeded and failed than you do normally from just trying yourself. 
So, some predictions. And again, you know, we've got some experts in the room. Mangler's over there if you want some real statistics. But essentially, we have some great reports here you can see. So again, really important trends. Three most important trends in retail banking. At the top, massive. Removing the friction from the customer journey. And that's what I'm referring to in terms of you need to be able to start a transaction at any device and carry it on the next one. And it needs to look the same, feel the same, have the same functionality. Millennials don't have the patience to work out how to use an ATM screen that's different to their app. It has to look and feel the same. That's it. That's what they demand. And if they're not patient and they don't understand, oh, that's a big change. They just want it done. So there's lots and lots of things you need to consider. Equally, um, top strategic, you'll see redesign enhanced digital experience. Again, they tie together. You get one right, the other one follows. Again, I'm not going to read these in detail. You guys can see the screen. But it gives you an idea of what people see as important right now and what we're working with on our customer base and our partners to help ensure that we do deliver success. So, how do you ensure you're relevant? What are you going to do? Is the ATM still going to be here in 10 years, 20 years? We believe it is. Our research shows we think it's going to be. Is it going to do the same thing it does now? No, it's going to change. And we'll cover some more of that in our discussion as a panel this, this afternoon. I'm sure as a group we'll all have different views and ideas. <coughs> Excuse me. But essentially, you've got to think, what are these devices doing for my customer? Not really what are they doing 10 years time, because we can cover that and other things, but how are they going to be part of that ecosystem? How are they going to be part of the omnichannel channel strategy? And how are you going to change things? Because the way in which you interact has completely changed, and it's only going to continue to do so. So the way you actually interact is going to be different. You can see now on the screen, there's some things you may not have seen before. Merchant Lockers is up there. If you don't know what they are, come and see me later. But there's a very, very exciting new technology that's coming through that's going to change the way things are done. <coughs> NCR's at the forefront. We want to work with you guys. We want to be a partner, a friend, an ally. We're here to help you. So if there's anything I or anyone else can do to help, let us know. That's the end of my presentation today. Thank you all for your time and attention. Uh, thanks very much, Craig, uh, for an excellent overview of the digital shifts that are impacting our industry. I really enjoyed it. Uh, just a quick question about uh, call centers. You mentioned that mill millennials use that more than uh, yeah. Yeah, any other demographic. Are you seeing um, in this region use of chatbots and uh, AI-based um, automation of, of the call center function? Yes, we are. And as a result, we're actually investing highly in AI as well. We've right. made some recent more acquisitions in that space to really start interrogating those devices more so we can understand the traffic that's coming through and make sense of it. Because the more we can do to help our customers with self-service automation, not just through going a branch and having transformation, but about actually understanding how those interactions are taking place and monitoring them, the more efficient everybody's going to be. But you're absolutely right. It's a new way of it. And then the, the AI uh, programs obviously would feed into David's point about uh, the ATMs and data mm -hmm. you know, as a data point. Yeah, absolutely. Data is key. And big data is key. And the fact people are mining it, doing more with it, and so on, is paramount. And that's going to change the world, because not just in the ATM space, but if you look at healthcare, it's going to be huge. Great. Thank you very much. Well, uh, audience, if you have some questions for Craig, you're most welcome. Just put up your hand. And Got a question there, thank you. I'll be on the panel this afternoon as well, so we'll have a chance yeah. to talk more. Oh, Any questions there? Just raise your hand. It's lunch next, guys. So we'll get yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then Craig is coming back for the yeah. panel discussion this afternoon, so uh, you can keep your questions for them. Well, uh, Craig, once again, thank you so much. Thanks, guys.